Hi everyone and welcome back to video number three. In this video we're going to continue with the recipe for extremely reproducible enrichment analysis and we're up to the stage 14 um, which is build a custom docker image for the project and we're going to continue until stage number 18 and really today is about building that that docker image. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through the process and uh, show you uh, everything step by step. All right, so uh, in this, what uh, we've provided here is a uh, a Docker file. And what this is, is a recipe for how to, yeah, for the computer to use to build an image with all of these uh, softwares here. So we're going, um, first thing I'm going to do is copy it all uh, to that folder that I was working in previously, the one called set7kd. Um, and I'm going to call this file, And I'm going to paste all that stuff in. Um, I'm just going to tidy up <laughs> this formatting just for my OCD. And um, first thing I'm going to do is talk to you about what the main uh, steps main uh, important uh, parts of this are. Okay, so uh, with a Docker file, it's quite common to not use a completely new uh, image. Uh, we typically want to derive from something that's already well established. So in this case here, we're looking at um, Bioconductor Docker. And this is a really fantastic resource because this um, Bioconductor uh, image has all of the dependencies already installed for all of the packages in um, Bioconductor. So it's really an amazing thing that we can install any uh, R uh, packages on, uh, sorry, any Bioconductor packages. And they're, they're kind of guaranteed to work, which is really great. Uh, so that's that line there. And we're, we're gonna modify this in, in future, but uh, I just wanna walk you through the main steps. The next one here is to um, install some other utilities, um, and they that includes nano and git uh, inside our image. Because remember, with these um, Docker images, they they don't generally come with any additional packages, and a lot of and a lot of things you need to kind of install additionally. So nano for for modifying text files, git for um, uh, source control in um, as well. And this last one here is Magic Wormhole. And this is kind of a, a neat utility. If you want to get um, files from one computer to another, uh, it, it, it's really fantastic. So for example, if you're, if you've logged into a server that's behind a firewall and you want to kind of get that uh, a file from that computer to another uh, computer behind a different firewall and another organization, it's hard for those computers to communicate with each other, but uh, if the, if you use Magic Wormhole, uh, it's possible. So um, do look it up if you um, ha uh, are interested. Uh, and then it runs apt to get clean to kind of clean up the environment a little bit before it uh, moves on with the rest of the uh, installation, uh, which involves some R packages. So it installs things that are, uh, required for generating the reports that we want to make. Cable Extra for generating the nice looking tables. Uh, VO plot for violin plots. I think we don't need that, so we might get rid of it. Um, G plots for heat maps. We might keep that. And Euler for uh, those Euler diagrams. We'll keep that as well. Um, this here is uh, the installation of some of the bioconductor packages that we might need. Um, and the ones that we're going to use are DEC, Cluster Profiler, and FGSEA. And we might remove these other ones. Um, and also, um, uh, in this protocol, we're going to um, clone a um, Git repository. Um, not this particular one. We're going to clone the one that we made in the previous video, the one about set seven. So, uh, yeah, and that's, um, and in this one here, what we're doing is setting the environment for that um, Docker image. Okay, so what I'm going to do is first uh, show you about uh, which Docker 
image to select. And just referring to this um, one here, we might want to just look at the information that's in the protocol. And it says the uh, Docker files are kept here. And I think I've got that open. Um, and so when you, um, yeah, when you first visit this site, it's going to show you the development Docker image. And that's kind of not what you want because development is going to be um, not stable, really. There are, because there's lots of bioconductor developers adding changes all the time. So it's, it's not the right selection for you if you want reproducible results. What you want to do is choose the latest release. All right, so you want um, Bioconductor Docker um, and there's a release 17. And what I'm going to do is change the, the 16, which was used previously to 17 for this particular uh, project. All right, in the next step, basically what I'm doing in each of these steps is asking myself what it is I need um, in my project and getting rid of anything I don't need and then adding uh, things that I do need. So uh, for this part here, I think uh, keeping nano, git, and wormhole is a good idea. So that's fine. We can skip to the next one. Um, we are not going to be needing the violin plots, so I'll get rid of that. Uh, and then when it comes to the bioconductor packages, um, uh, we're not going to use get DEE2 because the set seven data that we're going to fetch is not going to be from that DEE2 database. It's going to be from uh, the GEO, GEO database. And we're going to use the link down here, the, one of these links, I think FTP. So that means we can uh, get rid of that dependency. That's always a good idea to remove things we don't need. And we're going to be using Cluster Profiler and FGSEA so we can get rid of Mitch, which is a pathway analysis tool that we're not going to use in this uh, analysis. All right, so next is the cloning the repository. And remember, um, the one that we made in the previous video is called Set7KD for knock, Set7 Knockdown. So I'm going to grab this here and change change that, actually, not that one. We're going to use the HTML option. You're probably asking yourself why that's the case. Um, it's because I don't want to use the SSH key we made previously. Um, using the, the HTTPS allows us to clone the repository, but not make any changes and push them because this analysis is just going to be simply executed in the in the image. We're not going to do any development. Okay, so there's that. Um, and in this next step, we're setting the working directory. And um, as you can see here, it's set to enrichment recipe. That's the previous um, protocol. And what we'll do now is change it to set seven KD, and that just sets our working path. Okay, so I think that covers all of the changes that I intend to make for this. Um, I press Control O to save, and then Control X to exit. All right, so I've done those changes. Um, okay, and now I'll, I'll walk you through these other points here. So think about how we will link data and code. So recall the the, the journal article. Um, one of the important things is how do we automatically obtain the, the data? And I mentioned here that we're not using the DEE2 database. So for this example, what we're going to do is download from NCBI. So I've already um, made those preparations, at least on the Docker file side. We'll have, when it comes to the actual workflow in the R Markdown file, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, so there are lots of different options for this. Um, um, the one that I mentioned is, um, you know, depositing or fetching from an archive, but there are lots of different approaches. The first one is that, okay, if the data is relatively small, 
such as the one that I'm dealing with here, it's only six samples and I think it's a, a few megabytes, then um, you can actually add that to the GitHub repository without any problems. But um, you know, if that data is really large, then it's going to call, you know, going to be inconvenient um, whenever you're making changes to your GitHub repo, things are going to feel sluggish. Um, and uh, in any case, GitHub has a has some limits on the the total data size for repositories, and you um, so and it's really not suited for for raw data or large data files anyway. So um, there are, yeah, you'd be recommended to use a different option. Um, one option is to copy the source data from, um, uh, yeah, is, is to include a line such as um, uh, copy source file path into the repository name somewhere here um, so that when that image is built, it actually um, brings the data in. And we might actually do something like this for the, the um, pathways here. So I'll double check whether the pathways are available and we might actually do this. All right, so just to give an idea, um, yeah, we might, I, I might do this on the fly. So um, I like to use React Home uh, database for my pathway analysis, but that's really a personal preference. You might be interested in something else. I like to go to the download page and download the gene set file. Hopefully I can find it. Um, where are we? Um, list of pathways, specialized formats. I think we're getting closer here. Gene set, yeah, gmt.zip. Copy link address. Um, I'll use the shell to download this file. Yep. So that's been obtained. Um, I will unzip it. You might need to install unzip with the apt-get tool. All right, and now I can see that this React Home is present there. What I'm also going to do, what I like to do when I download a React Home is to in, is to change the name so that I know what day that was downloaded. So um, I like to use this sort of um, naming convention. It's June 30. Enter. Um, so that when I deal, when um, this file name appears anywhere in the, the data, not the data, the code, uh, people can see, okay, it was downloaded on the 30th of June. Um, so that's kind of uh, reproducible. All right, so now that we've got this React Home Pathways, I'm going to go back to our Docker file and we're going to copy in um, da, 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 da. copy in this file. So the, I'll return to that protocol, hopefully we'll find it here. So uh, it will work something like that. Uh, so the location is set seven KD slash react home. Uh, I don't think that is necessary. Things to be a folder location and I need to give the full path here. So I've got to find a full path. Return to my shell. Use PWD to get the full path. Copy that. Okay. So and with this command. It's a good idea to um, copy in and return uh, uh, gene set final. Yeah, give it a description. Always a good idea, and I think that's fine. Or how a Docker file. See how it goes. 
The next step is to build the Docker image. So um, the command is docker build minus T uh, and then um, yeah, the username that's building it and then the project name. Uh, and it, okay, it's gonna take a little while to, to, to work. All right, so if, um, yeah, and I think it's possible to just use your project name and not provide your kind of alias, but it's uh, there's one reason why that's a good idea. If you want to share that image on Docker Hub, you need to have um, the alias there. Um, it's just easier to do it at this stage. Um, so if you don't have a Docker Hub account, you know, log into that. Um, yeah, set one up and, um, you know, to make things simple, make it the same name as your um, GitHub account. Um, unfortunately, I didn't do that. So I'm, um, I have a different uh, GitHub alias to Docker Hub alias, and I've got to remember that each time. In any case, what I'm going to do now is um, uh, Docker build, build minus T. Uh, my alias and then the project name and then a dot at the end. So what this dot at the end is doing is it says, okay, this is the um, the path where the Docker file is located. So if the Docker file was located in a separate location on the computer, then I would need to provide whatever that path is. But because it's here, I can use dot. So I'm going to start this off and it's going to take up to 25 minutes to build on this computer here. Um, so um, what I'm going to do is press uh, pause and come back to this in uh, a few minutes once it's finished. Okay, so I'm 20 minutes in the future and we have a Docker image. There was just one slight problem with um, the build um, initially and uh, it was with this copy uh, command, which appears like it didn't work last time and it kind of just failed. Um, what I did was to have a look at whether this command was correct. And it looks like Docker does not like the fact that I used a full path uh, because when I used the relative path, it worked fine. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is the new line. It's actually a lot simpler. So copy that file uh, to the uh, directory inside that container. And then um, it actually, uh, I built it again and it was able to skip directly to that uh, step and do it correctly and successfully built. So that was uh, good to see. Um, the next part in our protocol is to make sure that uh, that Docker image is available. So Docker images is the command. And that's going to show me all of the uh, images that I have available. So uh, we've got Bioconductor, Enrichment Recipe, um, the ones I made previously, uh, our studio I made previously. And this is the one here that we just made. So that's um, 7KD, about a minute ago, all good. Great. So the next step. Step 17 is to check that the Docker image works. Um, so this is just a bit of uh, uh, training, I guess. We're going to do Docker run minus IT, there's some options in there, minus minus entry point in bash. That tells uh, Docker that we should be opening a shell to start with. And then we're going to provide the name of the image, set 7KD. All right, so there it is for me. I'm going to run it and you'll see that we're, uh, we have a different looking shell where it uh, looks like we're a root user in this container. And while we're here, there's a few things that we need to check. We need to check that the present working directory is indeed the cloned repo, right? So we should, when we do pwd, 
um, it says that we are in the root directory and that's actually not what we're looking for. We're actually hoping to be in uh, set seven KB, set seven KB, that's where we should be. So I might need to go back and change that Docker image again. So I'll pause and then come back to you in a second. Okay, so we're back and that problem of the working directory was fixed. And I think it, I'll show you the changes that I made. Uh, I'll show you the Docker file. So basically I just had these two lines on these two commands on the same line and that was what was causing the problem. So um, if you separate them, then that will work fine. And if you have, you know, the just the folder name here, that's fine. But if you also have slash the folder name, they both work okay. So with that in mind, we can try that uh, Docker run command again, and you'll see that we are in the root directory and in the proper um, working directory set 780. And that is looking fantastic there. So, um, uh, so the things we should check, the work working directory is fine. We want to check that R can be opened, and then we want to check that some of the CRAN and Bioconductor packages can be loaded. So let's give that a try with R. Okay, good. We've got R 4.3. That's terrific. Now we can do library, and we'll do something like DC2. That looks good. That's wonderful. And the next one we'll try will be, I think, uh, FGSEA. Um, uh, is it uppercase or lowercase? I always forget. I'll try lowercase. Yes, that's fine. Uh, and so if we do FGSEA, we can kind of make sure that it's loaded. There we go. There's our gene set analysis. So that's fine. So once that's shown, we can do uh, Q to quit. And uh, we can also, um, maybe we can drop back into um, our, our shell here. And now that our Docker file is working, we can uh, commit that to the repository. So we'll do it add docker file, um, it commit minus m, um, docker file added, very original, uh, it push origin name. Right, so that's gonna be um, pushed to our public repository. Let's take a look at this and reload that and it has actually added the docker file there so that's looking really good and now that that's working um, uh, that was really all we wanted to show you for this video uh, in the next video we'll be talking more about customizing the r markdown file that actually executes that um, enrichment analysis but yeah that's all i had for now thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one